Hi, this is Martin at Revelation Software and welcome to another in my series of videos looking at getting started with Open Insights. And this video is going to be super exciting. Why? Well, because I haven't prepared for it. These are tools that are used for reporting on Open Insight data. Uh, very often they are exposed to end users. And for that reason, I'm just going to take our clinic application that I've been working with and we're just going to go for it. So it'd be interesting to see where we go with this lesson over the next half hour or so. Right, there are various options when it comes to reporting from Open Insight. The first option is fairly basic. It's uh, TCL, it's a command line where the user will input a list statement or create a list statement that is then executed and it will produce a fairly basic column based report for us. We'll have a look at running one of those in a moment. You've then got the report builder, which is the main reporting tool within Open Insight at the end user at the easy level. Uh, there's a wizard within that report builder, or you can go into um, actually creating the report a little bit more manually, um, but it will enable you to create quite a nice formatted column based report with headers, footers, etc. That's then extended through the banded report builder, which will enable you to band the data in different ways. And then we've also got OIPI, which is the advanced print engine within the uh, toolset. These are reports that are created in code, so they're not end user generated reports. These are definitely reports for developers. Um, you need to create quite a bit of code, but you can create some very nice formatted reports. And we'll have a look at one that I wrote for my contact manager in a few moments. And then, of course, you've got a number of third party tools. This list is not exhaustive. Um, you've got S-List from Spetsatura, which is one of the leading third party reporting tools. Very nice tool for creating some pretty reports. There's also T-List. You could use Crystal Reports being one of the more mainstream reporting tools that people use in the, in the industry. Um, you could also use the SQL Connector to use any of your SQL tools to report against if you've got a, a BI section within your business. Those users that are used to using their own tools could be reporting against a subset of data that you've pushed out using the, uh, the connector technology. Um, in addition, if you want to have some very nice multi-page, pretty, very nicely formatted reports, then my colleagues here have used Olay to push the data out into something like Microsoft Word for some very nice multi-page reports. And we've got some clients that are extremely happy with the results of those, um, particularly if they're producing reports for senior management or even for clients. So lots and lots of different options um, depending on what you want to report, how you want the report to look, and obviously the skill level of the individual producing the report. OK, so let's come out of the PowerPoint presentation and we'll go and have a look at running the TCL and producing some reports from the list statement. We'll use our clinic application to look at TCL. So let's just run that up for the moment. And we don't actually need to go as far as launching the forms designer and going into uh, the actual application itself. We can get it to TCL from anywhere within Open Insight. So we're just going to do it from the development IDE here. To run TCL, it's F5 on the keyboard. And we're presented with the command line window, which is a simple command line, an execute button, and an assistant. Now, I can go into here, and I can type list, and then all of the different bits and pieces that I need. But I'm a Windows guy. Um, I'm not used to typing in syntax and things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the assistant in this particular instance. Now, the first thing that we are asked for is a list of available TCL commands. And the one that we're interested in is list. So we'll select that. And then we are prompted for a list of available tables. So which table do we want to use? And um, we want to use the MP patient table. So I'll select that one. And then which columns do we want to use? So I think we'll have the hospital number. We'll have the four names, the surname, and I think we'll have the approximate age just for the moment, just a few items from here. Once we're happy, we can click OK. And then we can just very simply execute that report. And Open Insight will go away. 
run the reporting engine and produce that report for us. OK, and there we've got our report, which is all of the patient information that we've got in our database. A uh, very simple report. We've got a patient um, header here, page number and the data that we want and a little thumbnail here. Now I should point out that this is the new print engine that we've got. So what I can do here is I can save the report and I can save it in lots of different ways. So as a CSV file, as a PDF, as a Word document, Excel, as a, an image or as a web page. So lots and lots of different options there for me to save it. I can also email that file out directly to, um, to somebody. I can set up the page as you'd expect in a report writing tool. I can print. I can also reflow the page if I want to. I can change the magnification. I can also show or hide the thumbnails, navigate through the different pages or jump to a specific page. And I can also view just a single page as we've got here or continuous view, put two pages side by side, multiple pages. I can also um, have a text selection tool and I can also search for text. So if I want to find all of the Smiths in my report, I'll just do a search and I can see there are three Smiths. And if I just select these, then you'll see them highlighted in the report. So it's quite a nice little tool. Um, not a lot of work needed to create these reports, but quite a lot of functionality available to your users. So let's just have a look at a few of the other options now. If you click the down arrow within the TCL window, you can see all of the statements that you've run previously. Now I've actually refined this list. It was quite a lot longer um, and you can edit one of the records in Open Insights and, and manage this list. But if we just look at a few more, um, let's just have a look at this one here. Now what we're saying is I want to list only 10 records. Now let's say for instance that we are playing with our data and I'm putting together some of these statements but I've got a hundred thousand records or a million records in my database. I don't really want to be bringing all of those back just to test something. So in this instance I'm just going to say give me ten of them. So what Open Insight will do is to go away, it will look at the database and it will produce me a report with just ten records in it. And you can see you've got those ten records. Another option that's available to me, um, I can have the same select statement, but this time I'm saying I want to produce the records with a surname of equal to Smith. So it should come back and just give me the three Smiths that I want. So you could use these with commands to search on any column for any particular value. And it's a very quick and easy way of just getting little subsets of data out of the database for you. And you can see here that I've got Bill, Fred and Abigail that have been returned into, into my report. Another option is to set it to produce the report by something, so by surname. Now it could be by, which is going to create the data in an ascending order, or you could do by, I think it's DSND with a hyphen in between, and then that will have the data in a descending order. So this is going to produce my main report with all of the surnames in ascending order. So we go from, in this instance, B to S, basically A to Z. And another nice little feature within TCL is the ability to send the data to a grid. So by using parenthesis or, or bracket G, then what I can do is to send that data straight out to a grid. And in here I can do all sorts of things. I can manipulate the data, I can put the hospital numbers in order, put the surnames in order, look at the data in different ways. I can say give me these rows, right mouse click and I can copy the selected data to the clipboard and paste that into um, Notepad or Office or whatever. I can copy the row, I can save the column to the clipboard, lots of different things. I can cut and paste them. Um, I've got a number of options no options as, uh, here at the moment um, and I've got help and then obviously I'm doing things and if I've played around with this data and I want to get it back to the position where it was when I started 
then I can just hit the reset button or I can print it or I can export that out to a CSV file. So this particular grid is really nice for people that want to get all of the data down and just say, okay, I want that and that and that and I want to display it in this particular way. So it's quite a nice little feature. And also if you want to produce this data and then copy it out into Excel and then maybe if you've got some statistical data, you might want to do some charts in Excel or produce the data in a nice way for a presentation or, or a meeting. So that was just using the parenthesis G. And as I said, you've got all of your uh, list statements that you've created previously. So if you are relatively new to this sort of thing like I am, you can look back and say, okay, that was how I created that one. But don't forget, you've got the assistant if you need it. So that's using the TCL. Right, before we go into the report builder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my contact manager application and I'm going to open up the forms designer and grab the contact entry window. And we'll just test run that. And I'll bring in my record. Now, this form has got quite a lot of information on it. It's got my uh, address, my phone numbers, obviously my name, my contact um, record number, etc. Um, if there were any notes, it'd have general notes about me, uh, details of my communications, opportunities that are linked to me, uh, and other information. So there's a number of tabs here. Um, what I might want to do is for um, a site visitor or something, I might want to produce a report. So I've got the ability to do that by hitting the print this record button. And what this is going to do is it's going to run an OIPI routine that then produces this report. Now it's a multi-page report, so we've got the thumbnails that we can flick between. But if I just make this just a little bit bigger, then you can see that I've got a logo. I've got some header information, the ID, my name, company name, and then my contact information underneath that is reasonably nicely well presented. It'd be nicer if the address was here and the phone numbers you know, using this white space. But you can see how I've got this information grouped in a box with some you know, color headings. Um, if I had any notes, then they would be listed in this area. Um, but I've got my communication summary in a table with all the different communications, the summary information, the type and dates. And then below that, I've got my opportunity summary. So any opportunities that were working with me. And again, it'd be nice if I was to tidy this up a little bit so that this header was to show again on the second page. But yeah, this is quite technical job creating these reports. And I'm, I'm not quite that clever. Those of you that know me, I'm not a developer, but I have taken the example OIPI routines in the examples application and open insights. And I played around with those to create this. So let's just come out of there. And we'll go into the system editor in Open Insight. Just close down these windows and we'll have a look at the code that was used to create that. All right, so in the system editor, if I go into this um, store procedure, which is simply print contact, then you can see in here that this is the code that has been created or I modified to produce that report. And I'm not going to go through every single line in here. But it's a subroutine, so we declare some functions and some subroutines. And then we go through and we open up the contacts table, read the contact ID so we know which record that we're going to be working with. We initialize some of the printing sessions. These are some of the different options within OIPI that you can set. We then display the report with the print preview, set the text, set the different fonts. And then a little bit further down, we can define the headings, the bitmap that we want to display. And then these are all set printer commands for telling the system where to print things. Um, we can print rectangles. And you can see here that you just go through and all of this code has been created to produce that formatted report. So you can get as much control as you want. You can get into as much detail as you want and within your skills. 
So this is very much not a tool for end users. This is a developer tool for developers to create some nice formatted reports. So if you're an end user looking at this and you want to have some nicely formatted reports, go and see your developers. If you just want to have the column based reports, then that's fine. There are tools to help you to do that, but not, not the formatted stuff. So that's OIPI. Let's just come out of here and we'll go back into the clinic application that we're working in and we'll have a look at the report builder. Right, now's where things start getting interesting. We're gonna drop into the report builder. And this is the interface that you could expose to your users um, for them to create their column based reports. As I said earlier on, there are two ways of producing the reports. You can either do it um, using the tools or you can do it using a report with a wizard. You've also got the ability to create labels as well in here, but uh, we'll just concentrate on a report. Let's look at the wizard first of all. So an opening screen, which you can click next to. And first of all, we're prompted to select the table that we want to work with. And we want to work with our MP patient table. So we'll select that and next. And then the columns that we want. So I think we'll have hospital number. We'll have the forename, surname. Um, we'll go with the town this time and the approximate age. So just a, a few bits and pieces there, fairly simple. We can reorder those if we want to. So for instance, I might want to have the age you know, with the information about the individual. So we'll just move that up and have the town below. Once we're happy, we can click next. And then how do we want to group the data? Now, I don't want to group the data in this particular report, but if you were producing a report of sales by company, then what you might want to do is you might want to group that sales information by the individual company and have that uh, laid out accordingly. So if you wanted to, you would just move across whichever column you wanted to group the data by. How do we want to sort our data? Uh, in this particular instance, I think that we'll sort it by surname and I can sort it either ascending or descending. Ascending seems to make sense. So we click next. And then we need to enter a description for this report. So this is just going to be a patient listing report. Fairly straightforward. And then what do we want to save our report as? Now, remember for all of my entities, I have a particular naming convention. So MP underscore report. That's gonna bring all of my reports together in the repository. And we'll just call this one patient list. And we'll go next and finish. So that's us done. Uh, the system then brings us back to the main design interface. But what I could do is just go ahead and hit the test run button and see what Open Insight has produced for me. OK, and there's our report. Um, fairly familiar. It's the same as the TCL. It's using the same print engine. And you can see here that I've got a little bit of a header. I've got my column headings and the data underneath. So fairly basic very easy to do very quick to do um, so let's see how we can now tidy that up a little bit now we already looked at the file menu within this interface under edit you've got the ability to cut copy and paste and undo insert we can insert various information we need to go ahead and do a few more bits first select we'll come back to in a moment we've then got options so whether we want a header a footer column headers detail we might want to have grid lines row count or company information. Company information might be useful. So I've already um, got my information in here, so it's pre-populated, but I could put in, you know, whatever company name, etc. So that will produce on the report as well if I want to. Um, but under select, this is where all the interesting stuff happens. Now we've already selected a table and our columns and our rows, and we set a sort and display order, but I can go in there and I can change that if I want to. So I could remove surname and pick something else. Um, I could add another column to display if I wanted to change the sort. And I can also set the selection criteria. We're going to come back to that in a moment. I just want to go one step at a time at the moment without changing too much. So we'll just cancel out of there. Um, I can also go into the column layout. 
so I can say that uh, the action I want to break on something the break format the different sorting and for this one what we're doing is we're actually on town so you can see the column label name there is town the column length whether it's characters trips or calculated I can shade the column if I want to I can change the column font change the justification the output conversion etc um, don't want to change any of that for the moment so we'll just go cancel and as you can see there I was on town what I really ought to do because I get myself confused sometimes you just make sure that I'm resting on, on the first one um, I can also set a default font so I think what we'll do is we'll go with Arial regular and we'll take that down to eight so we can get a little bit more on the page and I can also go and set the header font so I might want that to be um, Arial rounded bold and I want, might, might want to make that 14 and for the footer fonts I might want to um, keep that quite small as well because that's just going to be at the bottom of the page and I've also got the column header font so you've got your header for the report and then also you've got the header for your columns so I normally tend to just make that bold sometimes take it up a font um, just so that you know it does actually um, show up uh, a little bit more clearer now I've reduced my font to 8 in the report so 10 is fine so I'll click OK and I won't actually that's just for fun I'm going to change the color on that to navy and I'll make them underlined just for no real reason so we'll click OK and let's just add in a header here so this is going to be my uh, patient listing report and in the footer here we'll add in some additional information now I can add in the page I can add in the date that it was created the time that it was created and I've also got the ability to uh, do a couple of other bits and pieces here but I'm, I'm quite happy with this so what I'll do is I'll have page um, and that gives me the page number and then I'll have printed and that gives me a date and a time okay let's just test run that see what we get okay so that's looking uh, quite a bit different we've got a uh, new heading the hospital number looks a bit strange the uh, it might be better to centralize that do something with, with that one um, the same with the approximate age might want to do something with that and at the bottom there I've got my page one and when it was printed so I'm quite happy with that so we can just go back into the interface and we can just you know, change a few of these things so hospital number I go into the column layout I think what we'll do is we'll change that to um, just hosp no uh, that will do and we'll center that so we'll click OK um, for name surname happy with most of that uh, the age one I think what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll just change that as well and uh, I know it's an approximate age but we'll just put that in as age and we'll center that one as well and um, the column length on that's actually a bit wide so let's just change that to 10 and we could probably do the same with hospital number actually Oops, sorry I don't want to go into there select and column layout and okay that's 14 let's just change that to 10 as well okay that and then we'll test run so you can see you can keep going backwards and forwards changing things um, getting things to look exactly how you want them to look okay so it's looking a little bit better uh, just slightly nicer format um, but you can play around with this as much as you want with the the sizings of the columns and how the data is actually going to look you know you're getting a, an idea of what you can do with this particular tool Actually, just before we go and do some more searching, um, let's just change a few bits and pieces in here because what it might be quite nice to do would be to insert the um, table name that we're working on. So we can put that in here. Let's just make that a little bit more obvious for our users. 
um, and also we might want to insert the company info um, so we could put in the name for instance um, just drop the address in there and what we'll do is we'll just drop that down I think what we'll also do is we'll insert the username as well um, just to see what we what we get in here so we'll test run that one see what difference that's made to our report okay I might actually want to tidy this up a little bit I don't um, particularly like the way that this is uh, displaying I have preferred it the way it was before um, but I quite like having the table name at the bottom there so I think that what we'll do is we'll just um, take these bits out of here um, and what we could actually do is we could insert those at the bottom so if I did want to have the username and um, I did want to have the uh, company name for instance down the bottom there okay I haven't put uh, the other bits and pieces then I could do that as well see so you can see how you can move this sort of information around very quickly and very easily within the tool okay so that looks a, a little bit better I'm sort of a little bit more more happy with that right let's look at enabling our users to select some more information now I'm going to start getting slightly out of my depth here um, but if we go into the um, sort and display order then we've got our selection criteria so we can modify that and we are select uh, prompted for a few bits and pieces so the column um, let's say that we want surname and we can choose an operator so we'll have equals and then we can drop a value into here um, you could pick an option or in this particular instance what I want to do is I want to have all of the Smiths so we'll insert that okay and then if we then test run that you then find that it's filtered our report so we just get all of the Smiths now that's absolutely fine if you're always only going to want to find the Smiths um, however in the real world that's not going to be the case so that's not really going to work for us so let's just go back into our sort and display order and we'll get rid of that we don't particularly want that line in there anymore and instead what we're going to do is we're going to create our own so the um, column that we want is going to be our surname we could have matching so we just insert that and if we just OK and OK we'll test run it we find that we've got a bit of an issue in here so what we'll do we're going to sort and display order and we'll modify that because this is not exactly what we want so what we want is we want select MP patient with surname matching surname now that's not really what I'm after so we'll do an F2 which enables us to go in and edit this and what I want to do is have select MP patient I'm happy with with surname and what I want to do is I want to prompt the user for something so what we'll have is we'll change this to uh, starting with and then we'll have a question mark quote and then um, enter the name close quote and we'll put another question mark in there now if I wanted to I could um, add another selection criteria in here I'm not going to but I could have and a particular column with something else let's keep it relatively straightforward for the moment so let's see if this works so okay okay let's go and test run this 
and this time when the report runs it's asking for a variable for the surname so please enter a value enter the name okay enter the name is a bit wrong it'd be please enter the value for surname um, but if I just put into here Smith we know we've got three of those in there and okay it then the reports now going to go away take that variable and it's going to find all the Smiths and produce those in the system for me or in, in the report for me so just to show that that works let's just go back into here rerun it and this time give me everything that begins with PHIL and I now get a report with all the surnames beginning PHIL so you can build up using the selection criteria you can build up that select statement to be as complicated as you want you have multiple statements in here um, to be able to give the information that you want to the users it doesn't need to be the whole database it doesn't have to be just you know 10 records you can actually filter this in a number of different ways and provide your end users with the ability to search for something in particular that's pretty much all I'm going to cover on the reporting for this particular lesson it's a, a step into reporting within open insights so I ran through some of the main options that you've got for reporting so TCL we looked at so just putting a very simple select statement uh, list statement in there sorry and then that renders the report for you using the report builder and we've just seen how you can provide the ability for your users easily to put a something to search for um, we also looked at a more complex report created in code use no IPI for formatted reports and also you know, there are other options such as third-party tools you can put your normal BI tools in there crystal etc so I hope this lesson has been useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson coming very soon take care bye bye